Thank you for tuning in to this 43rd episode of Heart to Heart. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and I am so honored to be going live with this 43rd episode today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Psalm. Uh, Psalm, the 39th chapter, verse 1. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Before I preach today, let me pray. Father, I just pray that you would hide me behind the cross. Lord, I pray that as I cast the bread upon the water today, it'll come back as pure gold, even gold as refined in the fire of faith. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless the people that hear your word. For your word is already anointed. We just thank you for anointing the people to hear it. And even as they hear it, that it will go forth as a burning fire within them. And that it will burn in the hearts and ears of those that hear their testimony. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Psalms 39 and verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Verse 2, I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good. And my sorrow was stirred. He's going through a time in his life, David, King David, and he is literally having to keep his mouth shut in the midst of persecution. Remember what the Bible said, Jesus said not a word. He went as a sheep before his shears and he said not a word. When those people accused him and said, speak up for yourself. What have you got to say about the matter? He said, not a word. David had to learn to keep his mouth shut in situations and just let God handle it. That's why I want to talk to you today about, Lord, muzzle this muscle. Amen. Glory to God. When we want to speak up and say something and just bless somebody out, and I don't mean to be a blessing on that one. I mean you want to bless them out. You want to say something to them that you know Jesus wouldn't say. Let's just be honest. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And you want to bless them out. Listen to this. David talks about putting a muzzle over his mouth. A muzzle protects the nose. There's the mind right there, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. And mouth of an animal. Proverbs 4, 19 through 23, he said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, notice this, my friends. What about the mind? How does the mind play into the muzzle, okay? Did you know that when the sheep is sheared, they have the anointing oil. They have oil put over their whole body so they can slide through the cracks of the rock. And the shepherd, all he has to do is call to them. Remember, his sheep know his voice. And another they will not follow. They know the one that has anointed them. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
Hallelujah, Lord. So they will hear the voice of the shepherd when they get stuck in the rock. And all they got to do is squeeze through the rock because the anointing oil is already on them. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. But he said, you've anointed my head with oil. Listen, did you know that when the oil would run down upon the sheep, the position that the sheep would be in is in a praying position. But listen to this. They would put oil over the nose to keep the flies out of the nose of the sheep. Because if the fly ever got up in the nose of the sheep, the sheep would lose its mind and kill itself. So the anointing would be placed over the nose, the entrance of the nose, and keep the mind clear. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So he anoints our head with oil. But when he anoints our head, he also anoints our nose. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Also, the Bible says, Be renewed in your mind by the washing of the water of the word. Amen. Glory to God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How? By the washing of the water of the word of God. Amen. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And sometimes when we just want to bless somebody out and say something we know we shouldn't say, we want to be that flesh and blood for just a moment. Shantae, God bless you. Glad you could tune in today to the broadcast. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We got to remember what David prayed. Lord, muzzle my mouth. Put a muzzle over me. Protect me from saying the things that I want to say. Amen. Glory to God. Because let me tell you something. It is also used to prevent an animal from attacking another animal. But look at this. Ephesians 4.31, he talks about putting away backbiting. Let me tell you something. I, I am very quick to say this. Sheep bite. <laughs> Sheep will bite. And let me tell you something. The church has this attitude lately of where it wants to backbite each other. Fighting and backbiting and trying to literally just... They're, they're wanting to run each other down instead of lift each other up in the church. We are the church. But when we are not doing what God called us to do and we're running each other down... We are sowing discord, as Pastor Trina said yesterday. We are sowing discord. My Lord Jesus, amen. James, the brother of our Savior, the Lord Jesus, talked about how the tongue is a deadly thing and it is set on course the fires of hell. James 1, 25, he talks about how to muzzle our mouth. Because James 3, 1 through 12 says that if we can't tame my tongue, it's a deadly thing. Our tongue is a deadly thing. It is a weapon. A lot of people don't realize that. It, it is an untamed beast within itself, within its own right. And if we don't learn to tame our tongue, we can damage other people's walk with God. Ooh, watch out now. Remember he said, if you were to offend one of my little ones, it would be better for a millstone to be tied around your neck and you to be thrown into the ocean than for you to ever to offend 
a child of the living God. He takes offense seriously. Pastor Trainer mentioned this yesterday. Offense is going to come. That's what Jesus even said. Offense is going to come. It's impossible. It's inevitable for you to be. It's impossible for it not to happen. It's inevitable that it will happen. And it's unfortunate, but offense will come. And as long as we are in this fleshly body, there's going to be times we are going to get offended. All right. Mm, Jesus, help me. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12, 34 through 43. The inner man brings out what's on the inside, on the outside. You see what's on the outside of your life from what's on the inside. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. I want to go ahead and go on a little bit further with this conversation today of heart to heart. The thing the church has tried to do a lot of times And has failed to do is muzzle the mouth. We we want to give somebody a piece of our mind. Oh, well, let me tell you how I feel about what you said. Don't matter. Let God be the judge. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. When we try to play God, we're going to damage the harvest. The Bible said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. He didn't say you tear the wheat apart, tear the tear apart. He didn't tell you to tear the tear apart. If you try to tear the tear apart, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to split the harvest. You're going to ruin the harvest. He said, let the tear and the wheat grow together until the time of the harvest. And he said, then... I'll do the separating. The Lord himself will divide the tear from the wheat. Are you hearing me? But if you're playing God, you're going to ruin the harvest. No wonder the church is so divided right now. We got this person saying, well, you can't do this and that and this and that, or, and you can't get to heaven if... If you wear this and if, if you do that, you can't get to heaven. We've got such a rule book of do's and don'ts in the house of God that we have fallen from the grace of knowing God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a grace in knowing him. Because, see, the Bible said those that know their God shall do great exploits in the earth. But now let me explain something to you. We need to get rid of all the dogmas and, and religious doctrine out there and go back to the Bible. B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. If we will actually get back to the word and let the word get back in us, then let me tell you something. God will back us if we'll let his word get back in us. Woo, Jesus, praise the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. The Bible said they went everywhere preaching the Lord working through them, confirming his word with signs following. Sister Kimberly, God bless you. Angel, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. But a lot of people in the church want to muzzle the ox. 
They want to muzzle the ox while he's laboring. 1 Timothy 3.18 says not to do that. Why? Deuteronomy 25 and 4. Because the only way that ox is going to continue to carry the yoke upon it, the only way that ox is going to be able to continue to do its job is that it remains unmuzzled in the process. Because what happens? The as it is going and doing its job, it becomes weary in its well-doing. It becomes weary. And I know the Bible says do not become weary in well-doing. Well, let me tell you why we become weary in well-doing. Because the people have muzzled the ox and he can't get to the nutrition that he needs. Because the master, when, it, it, when the ox got tired and, and got weary, the master would throw food to the ox. He would throw grain, bread, the bread of life. Jesus, he would throw bread to the ox, the grain to the ox. But if the ox is muzzled, it can't get the nutrition it needs. There is times to be muzzled in the body of Christ and times not to be muzzled. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's a reason that a lot of people don't like me in the church, the way I preach, because the Lord told Sister White and Brother Ricky when he appeared to them the other day, he told them, he said, I've removed the muzzle from Brother H.R.'s mouth. I've removed the filter. I'm, I'm not giving myself any glory. I'm just explaining to you why I'm so abrupt in the church now. Because it's time that the church get abrupt. It's time that we rise up and stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord, instead of thus saith the world. Amen? Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. We've been talking like the world for far too long. We need to start talking like Jesus. The Bible says that, when Peter was, oops, slowly. Now look at that. The enemy just messed with that. But look at this. Look. When Peter was in the crowd, they said, you're one of Jesus' followers. Because he had an accent, he, he was from Nazareth, but he, he said uh, he, he was from that part of where Galilee. He was a Galilean, and he knew that he had an accent. But you know, they said your speech betrays you. You are a Galilean. You you are a follower of Jesus of Nazareth. But you can look on that as a spiritual side as well. Paul said first spiritual or first physical, then spiritual. He said, they said to Peter, your speech betrays you. You're one of the followers of Jesus. Like Pastor um uh, oh Lord, like Pastor Justin said Sunday, uh when he was doing the music, he said that. Sometimes we are the only Bibles that people will read. Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes you are the only example of Christ that people will ever see. They won't open up a Bible, but they'll read you. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. And they'll say, hey, your speech betrays you. I thought you were a believer in Jesus. I, I, and you know, the, it, it, it's interesting but those that are pointing out that you're a believer, and a lot of them aren't really believers, but they're watching you and saying, wait a minute, your speech betrays you. I thought you were one of the believers of Jesus. I thought you was one of those followers of him. Because, see, they know you're supposed to be different than them. They know you're supposed to be set apart. So we need to start learning how to live set apart from the world. Amen. Can somebody say that's a good word? 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Let me tell you something. God will muzzle our heart sometimes. Because the Bible says that if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our out of the mouth of the heart, the mouth speaks. But if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. What's he going to do? The judge is going to say overruled. When your heart condemns you, when it says, I just don't understand. I, I know I'm messed up. I know I'm this. I know, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. God says you are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. The Bible says he has overcome the world. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Let me tell you something. We need to allow God to do what he wants with this mouth if we are ever going to be a mouthpiece for God. Luke 21, 15, Matthew 10 and 20. God wants to do more than just speak to us. He wants to speak through us. Matthew 10, 19 through 25. Jesus said, and when you are arrested and brought before men, to give an account. He says, you'll have, he says, do not think of what you will say for at that moment, the Holy Spirit will speak through you and it won't be you, Jesus said. Who will it be? It will be the Spirit. It will be the Spirit of your Father in heaven speaking through you. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Finally, I want to say this before closing. What about what happened when Caiaphas, being high priest that year, it said he spoke a prophecy, and then it said, but he spoke it not of himself, but by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost began to prophesy through Caiaphas, the high priest that year, that Jesus was the Lamb of God, that he was the sacrifice for the sins of the world. So when it said he did not speak of his own accord, but the Holy Spirit spoke through him, that's exactly what God wants to do through us. He wants to speak through us, not just to us, but through us. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. In Jeremiah, he said, I put my words in your mouth, Jeremiah. He said, you're going to hear what I've got to say, then I'm going to speak through you. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. So with that being said, I'm going to close right here with just this line of the song. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary holy and acceptable tried and true and with thanksgiving I'll be a living sacrifice of praise to you. Pray this with me. If you're tired of living your life double, if you're tired of being double-minded, because doubly minded is doubly blinded, if you're ready to follow and surrender and submit to the kingship and the lordship of Jesus Christ, pray this prayer on me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved in Jesus' name. Wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. 
Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray for healing, deliverance. I pray that people would be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And Lord, my honest prayer today is help us muzzle this muscle, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for tuning in to the 43rd installment of Heart to Heart. Looking forward to the 44th installment. Praise the Lord. I love y'all. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.